Hey there, this is Natalie, and on April the 1st each year, which is also Subaru's birthday, Tape Nagatsuki releases a new Ifrit for ReZero. Now, the sin-themed Ifrits like Pride If and Greed If are usually very interesting to fans because they show things in the canon ReZero story working out differently because of Subaru making different decisions that he doesn't make in the main story. And so they often reveal some interesting things that may offer clues to what's going on with aspects of the normal story. But for the last few years, it seemed like Tape has finished with those ifs and is instead doing things like the school if and the gender swap if, which are simply fun stories using the characters from ReZero and more like Tape writing a wacky fan fiction of his own work. So they don't really give us anything particularly useful when it comes to theories and clues. Because of this, I'm not going to go into what happens in the gender swap if chapters that we currently have, even though that if is the topic of the video. It's really just the story we know. Only literally everyone, including Subaru, has been gender swapped. So Emilia becomes Emilio and so on. But what I thought would be interesting to talk about is from a writing perspective, why you actually can't really gender swap Subaru and have the story of ReZero as it is work. There won't be any spoilers from after the anime in this video because most of what I'll be talking about was shown in season one, though I'm sure that people who've read the later arcs will be able to think of more examples of things that wouldn't really work with a female Subaru. Before I get into that though, this video is sponsored by my other brand new channel, Natalie Narrates, where I'm posting long form videos daily, reading out and reacting to interesting stories from Reddit, including relationship stories, am I the asshole stories, and also unexplained spooky stories from subreddits like r slash glitch in the matrix. I'm really hoping that having a channel like that where I can produce consistent, good quality content without the pressure to write constantly will help me get into a better financial situation and mean that I can still have the creative energy to write what I hope is interesting stuff for this anime channel. But while I'm still building up the watch time on there to qualify for monetization, I'm basically making a lot of content for no money, so it's a big help to me if you can check it out. There are about 10 videos on there right now, and I'm releasing one to two new ones every day. Also, if you can afford it and want to help support me while I try and get this new plan working, then you can donate via Coffee. A uh, link is in the description. Anything is appreciated, honestly. My financial situation has just kept on getting worse, and I'm hoping this is going to be the way out of it. But I do kind of need to ask my community for help just, you know, for a little while longer. As well as my unending gratitude, you also get access to audiobook versions of my Mishoku Tensei and ReZero side story readings just for visiting the coffee page as a thank you. And there will be more of these added in the near future too. But enough of that, let's get on to the meat and potatoes of what is my first ReZero video in quite a while. So, with a lot of stories, it doesn't make that much difference whether the main character is a man or a woman. And with a few tweaks, you could swap the genders of the main character or even all the characters and the story as it is would still work. I'm not talking here about what people choose to do by way of fan fiction or whatever, but talking about whether the same exact plot and character arc for a protagonist could work just as well if the genders had been reversed the whole way through the canon of a story. There is a tendency not to use female protagonists for stories where a lot of violent and unpleasant things will happen to the main character. Just because people tend to find it more uncomfortable to see, or if they're more of a Twitter mindset, complain that violence against a female protagonist is fetishistic. So if an author was to write a story like ReZero, where the main character is repeatedly killed in often pretty gory and horrific ways, it would be usual to choose a male main character. But that's really just a matter of sensibilities. It alone wouldn't be a reason why the story itself and its themes wouldn't work if Subaru was a girl. A female character 
could be put in Subaru's situation and have returned by death and die all of the deaths he does. People would just probably find it a lot more shocking and potentially complain that the series was misogynistic. It's a weird double standard, but it's definitely one that does exist. We might joke that the author hates Subaru because of all the things he puts him through, but if Subaru was a girl, then of course certain critics would be saying the author hated women. But again, while audiences may be less comfortable with extremely violent things happening to girls in stories than they are with boys, that doesn't really mean that a gender-swapped Subaru would break the story. What does is the story's underlying themes about Subaru's sense of what people expect from him and what he expects from himself, which stem from what he thinks it is to be a man. I said this before in the video responding to Noralities and her takes on ReZero, but ReZero is a story that deals a lot with expectations that concern young men growing up. That doesn't mean anyone else can't enjoy it or root for Subaru, it just means that that is the process the main character is going through, and you have to empathise with that aspect of his struggles. It isn't a problem for most people to do that, just as it isn't a problem for them to empathise with the reverse when they watch something like Madoka Magica that has themes relating to girls growing up, and so which also wouldn't work as well if gender swapped. That's just a part of what we do when we engage with fiction. So. Where this would become most evident in the story of a gender-swapped Subaru is with Rem. It actually doesn't matter if you gender-swap Rem or not for this to become apparent. If you leave Rem female, as she is, but make her fall in love with female Subaru and have her give female Subaru the same speech she does in episode 18, then Rem suddenly looks like a selfish cow, making ridiculous demands of the person she's fallen for rather than like someone who knows what the right way to support Subaru in that moment is. This is in arc 3, so at this point our female Subaru is a girl around the same age as Rem, who, as far as Rem has seen, has no particular powers or fighting ability. She couldn't even read the language here until a few weeks ago. She's as useless as Ram at anything practical and has just undergone a total mental breakdown that Rem witnessed. And now our female Subaru wants to run away. Rem herself, on the other hand, is an Oni who can kick ass with a morning star and is good at just about everything from a practical perspective. So for Rem to tell female Subaru that she shouldn't run away, that Rem wants her to be her hero, well, that would sound pretty messed up. Why, Rem? Why should this weak girl who's only recently even heard about any of these things that are going on and who has reached a mental breaking point right in front of you be your hero? You're much stronger and more capable than her. Why aren't you offering to be her hero? Wouldn't that be more comforting to her? And then of course, if you make Rem a man, then it's the same thing, only it looks even worse. People would hate it and they'd hate male Rem. Now that's not to say a female Subaru couldn't want to be a hero, or couldn't think she had to save Amelia and all of the other people male Subaru wants to save. It's only to say that Rem just wouldn't look justified, either to the audience or to Subaru. Female Subaru would be inclined to question it a lot more, whereas male Subaru expects himself to be a hero to these women, even though they're all stronger than him because he sees that as part of the responsibility that comes with being a man. And so while he may question why Rem believes in him, he's motivated by the fact she does. In other series, we see isekai protagonists deal with having certain expectations on them because they're made to take on the roles of saviors or heroes, such as in Rising of the Shield Hero. In these cases, what the character feels they have to live up to isn't really influenced by their ideals about who they were supposed to be from their previous lives, including based on what they think is expected of them based on their gender. And so it would actually be easier to gender swap now for me than Subaru for that reason. 
Although it would require some tweaks to the setting to make the initial betrayal part work if you did make now for me a woman, other than that, everybody who expects anything good or bad from now for me expects it because they know about summoned heroes, and the shield hero has a reputation that now for me specifically had nothing to do with. Summoned heroes in that setting can be women, so if now for me was a girl, we'd never question why other characters expected a female shield hero to be a hero. We'd also never question why a female protagonist would mistrust men after being betrayed by a man at the start of the story. So even the things in that plotline that do relate to gender work just the same in reverse. Now, we do actually see a female character who has to deal with expectations that come with a role like that, that is thrust upon her in ReZero, and that's in the previous Sword Saint, Wilhelm's wife, Theresia. And then we see a male character in the same position, in the form of Reinhardt. The weight of expectations to be heroic on these two characters is exactly the same, because it's about a role outside of anything to do with gender. But Subaru, at this point in the story, is not someone people in his new world have any particular hopes for. He's a guy with no visible skill or powers that nobody expects anything from in particular, but who is struggling with how he thinks he needs to be as a man. His inferiority complex is based on thinking he couldn't live up to his father, that he couldn't be worthy of being his son. Again, a girl could think that way too. A girl could want to embody every masculine ideal Subaru has in his head, but when it comes to the story, Rem and the others would not expect her to, and so Rem wouldn't try to encourage her in the same way, because it would seem really weird. Despite the fact that many of the strongest and most powerful characters in ReZero's world are women, we do see that there is a concept of what it is to be a man in this world and that it's not just something Subaru has carried with him from our world. We see this through Krush, who feels that she has to abandon her femininity to be the leader the cast and house needs. All of the other royal selection candidates are women and don't take that approach, but we can see that from Krush's background, in terms of Lagunican nobility and military leadership, she would believe people would have more faith in her and expect more from her if she was more masculine. She doesn't disguise herself as a man or pretend to be one, showing that it's not that she actually needs to be a man to be seen the way she thinks she needs to be, just that she believes that what she sees as masculine ways of approaching things are what will be expected from her. We know that this is a conscious decision that she's made, rather than her just being a woman who acts more masculine naturally, because once she's eaten by gluttony and loses all of her memories, she reverts to a more feminine persona which we can assume is her true self. The author never implies that it's right or wrong for Krush to think she needs to act like a man, or for Subaru to believe he has to be a hero because that's what men should be like. It's simply explored that they and other characters do have particular feelings around the gender that they are and what's expected of them. When a story has strong elements that rely on the main character's internal view of themselves, and when that is underpinned by anything to do with concepts like what it is to be a man, then gender swapping it makes things suddenly become either very weird or lose a lot of their impact. It's kind of like you can play Mass Effect as a female John Shepard and it doesn't change anything about the themes in the story, which are more about extrinsic morality. But if you could play Yakuza as a female Kazuma Kiryu, it would feel very odd because of how that character views manliness and that being part of what makes him work the way he does. ReZero is a story that needs the protagonist to be exactly the character that was written for it. You can't change his gender, his age, his nationality, who his parents are or anything else and get ReZero, even if a different character could go through the same plot points. This doesn't mean anything about the author, we know Tape can write compelling female characters because there are loads of them in ReZero, and we can see from Vivi and that other one with the planes that he likes writing female-led stories too. It's just an aspect of what's being explored in ReZero that means only a character like Subaru can lead that story. Of course, 
that doesn't mean it isn't fun to reimagine the characters as gender-swapped versions. And of course, plenty of good fan art has come out of the new gender swap ifs, even if they aren't the most interesting April the 1st stories Tape has ever done. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you to everyone who helps me out with support via Patreon and Coffee. Remember, you can get those ReZero and Mashoku Tensei side story audiobooks by visiting my Coffee page. And also, thank you to everyone who supports me by subscribing and watching on this channel, and of course, my new channel, Natalie Narrates. Please check it out if you haven't already. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you again very soon for more isekai stuff. <laughs>